Hey guys, it's Tori, and once again, apologize for my voice. You may have heard me say that a couple videos ago earlier this week, but uh, if you haven't watched those earlier videos from this week, sorry about that, I have a cold. But moving past that, today for Ancients of Thon, I'm going to be talking about Arthurian legends, the Arthurian legend and other legends within that kind of world. This video is going to have three sections. The first is just going to be discussing my journey with these legends, what I've read so far, what I've experienced so far with it. The second part of this video will be focusing just briefly on why I think people still really enjoy Arthurian legends, despite the fact they can be a little dated, especially in their treatment of women. And then I'm going to end by discussing a few books and things that I really would like to read and experience in the future, hopefully soon within the next couple of years so I can more fully get into the King Arthur legend. So kicking it off with my journey through falling in love with King Arthur legends, I actually started probably like most people, I think my very first experience with the King Ar Arthur legend, excuse me, was The Sword in the Stone by Disney. I don't think it took me a very long to time to watch this all the way through, but I had watched bits and pieces. And so I think, you know, I never really remember a time when I didn't know ab about the name King Arthur at least. And I think it started with just having an awareness of this movie, even though I never really watched it all the way through until I was a little bit older, oddly enough. But it is one that I do remember knowing about. And so that's kind of how I was introduced to the name King Arthur. But the first time I really started to learn and gain a little bit more interest in the story of King Arthur was definitely Avalon High, the F Disney Channel film, which was based on the books by Meg Cabot. I have never read the book, but I saw this film and was introduced to the idea of Guinevere and Lancelot and Merlin and Mordred. And so I was very intrigued by that. And that kind of spurred me on to start looking a little bit more into it, learning a little bit more about it. Another one that really stood out to me that taught me a little bit, I mean, it mentions Merlin and Morgana and that's about it, but it's still, you know, those names started to roll around in my head a little bit more was The Sorcerer's Apprentice, the one with Nick Cage in it. I think it's by Disney, I'm not completely sure, but that is one that they talk about Morgana and Merlin. In fact, they have, the prime Merlinian and then Morganians. So the Morganians are the people practicing dark magic and Merlinians are the ones who practice good magic. <laughs> but that started, you know, spinning the wheels a little bit more for me. And the show though that really got me going on the King Arthur legend was Merlin the TV show. This is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Does it have its flaws? Yes, there are a lot of plot holes. <laughs> in this show. So many plot holes, so many things that could have been done maybe a little bit better, but the characters are just so fabulous. Really that's what makes this show is the character development and the way they do Morgana is the best. She's so good. Katie McGrath as Morgana Pendragon in this fun adaptation is just, she's just so good. She's so good. They just do it so well. Her arc is so incredible and I just love it. So watching that and falling in love with it spurred me on to start doing research. So I started primarily with doing a little bit of research into different characters that were mentioned in the show and in other ways, trying to get a better feel for it. And then I ended up reading King Arthur and the Knights and his Knights of the Round Table by Roger Lancelin Green. Now, do I know when this was published? No, I don't. I know it's not an old one. It's a more recent retelling of it, but I did read this on Kindle and it gave me a good overview of the King Arthur story and spurred me on to do more research and learn about more of the characters. And then just in the past couple of years, a great thing happened where I was an English major in college. I'm currently a psychology major. Major. I ended up changing, but I was originally an English major and I read several King Arthur legend based stories, including, I gotta bring out my list so I don't forget any of it. First of all, Tristan and Isolde by Gottfried von Strasberg. This is a, I believe this is a poem about Tristan and Isolde and this and their love affair. And I really, really enjoyed this one. I don't, their love story I struggle with a little bit more than some of the other stories just because as I've mentioned before on my channel, I really struggle with cheating, especially in marriage. 
and that's basically what their love story is <laughs> is both of them are cheating on their partners and I just think it's very very unfortunate but uh, I still there's something also very beautiful about that those tales so um that one i did enjoy not my favorite but i did enjoy it okay then of course i read sir Gawain and the green knight in that same class and this one i really really enjoyed just a fun adventure with sir Gawain and just interesting characters that he meets along the way then i read percival the story of the grail by chretien de troy i definitely did not pronounce that author's name correctly but i read this poem unfortunately this one is unfinished so we don't really know where it was supposed to end up going but it was an interesting story i really like percival as a character he's kind of the underdog knight which i really appreciate about him he's seen as kind of being a little bit of a buffoon partly because he was welsh and you know those welsh people i guess <laughs> i don't anyway but yes that was i really like his story a lot and i really wish it was finished i know other people have like gone in and finished it but you know we'll just never know what exactly Chrétien de troy had in mind for his story so and then of course I've mentioned many times Marie de France and there are a couple of her lays that I've read that do take place within the King Arthur realm one being Landval and one being Chavrafail which I believe if I remember correctly I think Chavrafail is about Tristan and Isolde I'm pretty dang sure but it might no it, I'm pretty sure it's about them I couldn't remember if it was them or Lancelot and Guinevere but I'm pretty dang sure it was Tristan and Isolde so anyway all those pieces of literature just continued my love of the King Arthur legends continued my love of the Knights of the Round Table and have spurred me on to want to read more and more about them and experience more and more literature and film honestly with King Arthur so why do people find themselves so drawn to King Arthur especially yeah because a lot of the women in these in these stories are not treated very well they're treated very much they're either villains or they're supposed to be angels and there's not really an in-between there's not really any real depth to the female characters but I think honestly first of all I think people just really like the idea of a strong good leader uh, no matter what time period it's in I think we all just find ourselves drawn to the idea or most of us you know I'm not gonna say everybody likes King Arthur legends but I think a lot of us really like the idea of the strong leader who is good and cares about his people and is seen as being gifted by God because he's such a good person and bringing this kingdom together and that's what King Arthur represents he represents this strong great leader that people his people love and respect and that's such an interesting idea especially even in modern times you know there's we always have problems with our leaders and they're never perfect and so the idea of having a leader who genuinely cares about the people and who is very wise and good is just very appealing I think to most people. I also think just the stories themselves, these adventures of these knights going on these quests and trying to prove themselves and we're able to see these odd adversaries like the green knight in Sir Gawain and just all these different creatures and other beings and people who get in the way and I think there's something very interesting about these different adversaries and these different adventures they're just exciting it's kind of exciting to read a story that's just you know your run of the mill mill just adventure story where it's just meant to entertain you and I think there's something that's very attractive about that and then honestly I think in many ways we are intrigued by these women I feel like there's enough despite the fact that they're not treated super well I think there's enough of a look at the women in these stories that it's easy it's easy for our minds to play with them like we're intrigued by what could be going on in this woman's head if we heard the story from the perspective of the woman what would it be like i think there's just a lot for us to work with with these women especially because they're part of these big adventures even if they don't have much personality in the story we can create a personality we can create this whole new avenue of storytelling of telling these stories that are already exciting and make them even more interesting by adding more character to depth and opening the doors for these women's to, women to have a voice and I think there's something intriguing about it even though it's sad that they didn't originally have that 
it's interesting to think about what could be done, what we can do now, um, and what we can add to the story. Also, I think there are a few of the women specifically that I think just are very interesting. Specifically, I think Morgana Le Fay is, or Morgan Le Fay, is very interesting. I mean, she's this dark witch who's fighting this king, and I think there's something very appealing about that kind of an enemy. I don't know. I just think you can make her so dramatic, and I think people really like to play around with that. I think she's an interesting villain. I genuinely do. I would also say the Lady of the Lake and Guinevere are two other very intriguing female characters within the King Arthur legends that are a little more built up. The Lady of the Lake specifically has so much mystery around her that I think she's just very intriguing. She's one that I'm very interested in. And then the one other thing that I think people are drawn to with Guinevere specifically is her relationship with Lancelot. I think there's a lot of interest in that romance and also how it affects Arthur. Like I think it's interesting to think of that whole relationship between those three people and just the betrayal and heartache. I feel like there's just a lot of emotion involved in that storyline that people are interested in it, that people find themselves feeling engaged in it because their emotions are peaked because of the betrayal, but the romance and, you know, the trust that's broken and the trust that's built up between two people who shouldn't have that sort of trust between them. And I just think it has a lot of interesting emotional depth to it that people, yeah, are very intrigued by. So future reads, future experiences for me that I'm really looking forward to. And I hope you'll let me know down below if you have any other options for me that you think I might enjoy as I would love to know. I want to experience as much King Arthur as I possibly can. So three specific books that I would like to read. We have, first of all, of course, La Morte d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory. I have a copy of this that I really want to read, but it is pretty big. And so I'm kind of waiting until I'm in a position where I can read something that big because I always have big books on my TBR. I love big books, but they take time. So I have yet to have a chance to really read this one, but I have started it. I've read the first few chapters of it and have really liked it so far. So hopefully one day I'll be able to read the whole thing. Next we have King Arthur and His Knights by Howard Pyle. This is another one I already own. It's another chunky one. And this one I think goes a little bit more into specific stories of the knights as well, which I think will be really interesting and is one I really would like to experience. Another one I'm really interested in reading, I think it's called Once in Future King. I don't remember who it's by, but here's a cover, a picture of the cover of it. But it is one that I'm really intrigued by, just because I know it is the basis for specifically the musical, musical excuse me, called Camelot, which I also really want to see. I'm actually planning on watching it in June with a friend of mine, so I'm pumped about that. T.H. White, that's the name of the author. I mean, you would have seen it already and already knew that, but it just came to me. Anyway, yes, I would really like to read that. And honestly, I'd really like to watch a lot more films for King Arthur stories because honestly, the ones I mentioned are all I've really seen. So I'd like to watch a lot more, even if they're crappy ones. I just want to just get all the King Arthur content. So if you have any good recommendations for films, let me know. I am excited for the Gre uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight adaptation that's coming out in July. Uh, but yes, yeah, so if you have any other options, please let me know. Definitely would like to know. And I think that's all for this video. So again, let me know if you have recommendations. Let me know what your favorite King Arthur stories are. Let me know how you've fallen in love with King Arthur, if you even like King Arthur legends. What are your thoughts? Please share in the comments and I will talk to you next time. Bye!